A while back I made a uh, federal style drop leaf table for a, a client and friend of mine. Uh, we used uh, walnut that he cut from his property and we had milled up by another local friend and I made a video of that by the way. Well there was enough uh, walnut left over for me to be able to uh, make a couple of end tables to match a single end table that my client had but of course we spiced it up a little bit, cut some veneer and so forth. Uh, I used Design CAD to uh, make the design and uh, so this video goes through the whole process of making the, the those end tables and uh, this is the last video that I'm making in my Virginia workshop before I uh, move to Washington State so I hope you enjoy. Now I've cut these leg blanks uh, one and a half inch square by sixteen and a half inches long and later on I'll show you how I'm going to put a taper on these but right now I'm doing the joinery and uh, as usual I've elected to use dominoes I can get two dominoes into uh, each leg joint that'll go into the apron pieces now, that's going to be really strong that's a lot of uh, material there now these dominoes uh, I know you can't really see it, but I'm going to put a bevel on the corner of each one so that when the dominoes come together in the corner, they'll actually kind of interlock. And that'll take more advantage of the actual amount of wood that I have in this piece to give me a lot of glue surface. Uh, one of the things that you have to really be careful about when you're cutting these is that you don't have a whole lot of fence area to rest the domino machine on so you gotta be uh, you gotta be really sensitive to the fact that this machine may be tilted up or down a little bit and so I've gone ahead and I've already marked where the uh, the cuts have to be and now I have to really hold down on that fence firmly to make sure that this machine doesn't tilt down like this if that happened of course domino would go in uh, cockeyed and I'd be in trouble. Now with the joinery cut in the legs, um, you know the next step is to put the taper on the legs. Once the taper's on the legs, uh, then all the joinery's done, the taper's done, I can go ahead and smooth them off nice and start to finish and you know eventually glue it all up. So how do you do the taper? Well, um, several years ago, I, I built this jig. It's based on, uh, I, I believe I got the plan in fine woodworking. And uh, it's great for doing tapers. Uh, basically what you do is you, uh, you gotta be careful about your setup. You're gonna cut a taper off the inside of each of these legs. That is the side that has the, the, the joinery. So um, you got to think about this. If you set this down and cut the first side, you can be able to rotate at 90 degrees and cut the second side, assuming you have it set right. So I went ahead and marked a little piece of tape on all the sides that were going to be the first side up. And that would have the joinery facing the blade. And after I cut that slice off, I'll rotate this. And that joinery is facing the blade. I cut the second slice. So I've set up this saw, uh, set up this jig, and what's got it's got adjustments at both ends to allow you to adjust this fence so you can line up your the the cutoff, you know, with the edge of the table here. And then there's a little clamp here that holds this down in place. So I ought to be able to just cut this, then uh, re, un, you know, loosen the clamp, rotate this 90 degrees, cut the second one, and then I'll be done with that piece. So let's go ahead and do that.
So there you have it. You get a nice, uh, you get a nice taper, and uh, then I can come along with a plane and just clean this up, and uh, and I'm done. Okay, so I've cut 45 degree miters on all the parts of the frame for the two tops, you know, the big top and the little top. This is the little top, it's the uppermost, and you can see I've dominoed these to, to fit together. But now, what I gotta do is cut the curve for the curved top, and I'll, I'll start with this first one. I just made a, temp, a little paper template from my design CAD design. I'll just go ahead and cut this, smooth it all up, and then use that as the template for the rest of the curves. I use the same curve for the bottom table's curve. A lot of curves. Okay, now I think you can see a little better where this is all going. I've used the dominoes and miter joints to make the, uh, the top frame and uh, ditto for the bottom frame. I've got the curve cut on the top frame. Now if I line up the top frame with the bottom frame in the back, then I go ahead and trace the curve of the top frame onto the bottom frame. And then, you might be able to see in this frame, I can offset that curve forward a little bit, you know, inch or so. And that'll be the curve that I'll cut in this bottom frame. So the, the bottom frame panel is set, you know, the back of it is set forward a little bit from the, from the top frame. That's the design. And then the drawer, you know, will slide in like this. So next step is to go ahead and cut the curve on this bottom frame. I'll leave the back, let me show you here. I'll leave the back square. This is under the drawer. A panel will go in here because I always like to have a dust panel on my pieces. It's not necessary functionally. You know, you could have the drawer slide in with no panel, but that's, that's just not how I do my work. Uh, and so I'll keep that square so I can, you know, make it easier to make the panel. But the front part, I'll have to go ahead and cut that curve on the panel. Okay. Well, I put the finish on the legs and the aprons uh, using one pound shellac, one pound cut shellac. And now I'm going to uh, go ahead and glue them up. I've got the four domino slots cut into the legs and I've taken these dominoes and you might be able to see I've put a uh, 45 degree bevel on them so they'll fit together like this inside the slots and that way I'm going to take maximum advantage of the glue surface in here and They'll also interlock each other a little bit at the ends. Uh, I think it'll make it a really solid construction.
Let's see how that works. Well, I've made up six panels that will be the, um, the actual uh, panels inside the frames for the top. And uh, I used uh, some quilted uh, maple that I have, and on the back I just used uh, regular maple to um, you know, equalize forces. And I'm using three-quarter inch plywood here. And uh, I didn't show you all the steps of doing this veneering that's in other videos. Uh, I'll go ahead and post, uh, I'll post a link to one right up here, and, uh, and you can just see how this is done. But I did want to show you, uh, I'm going to go square up the sides. I made one square edge here with no glue or anything on it, and that'll sit like this. And then I'll just go ahead and square up this panel so that uh, when I go ahead and lay this out inside the frame, I'll have some nice square edges to work from. And, uh, I'll lay it up in the frame and I'll trace out the, uh, the shape that I need to cut and, <coughs> excuse me, cut that with the bandsaw and then come back on the uh, router table and uh, cut the, uh, the tongue all the way around, you know, both sides uh, so that we'll fit right into those panels or into those frames, excuse me. This is the, uh, the top case that the drawer fits in. The drawer will fit in like this. And all I did was uh, I took some uh, stock and made these corner pieces and then uh, made sides and back. And I just simply dominoed the, the stock. Now I've got a domino here at the bottom and a domino a little over halfway up the side. And the thinking here is these sides will change in width a little bit. The corners here will not change in length. When I attach this, I'll glue the sides and back to the tabletop, and I'll glue the top of the sides and the top of the back to the underside of that top table part. It's a little bit of unconventional construction because these corner pieces basically will have no function uh, structurally holding the, the, the upper top and the, and the lower top together. You know, typically that's what you'd have, but in this case, the sides themselves will do that. So, that means that uh, a little bit of shrinkage and, uh, and, and growth will happen here, uh, mostly in the upper half of this piece. So right now, I'm just using my, uh, my hand plane just to smooth up these uh, surfaces and get them to adjust. I want them to be just slightly higher than these corner pieces because this is summer right now. Uh, we're in the month of August, so I figure that uh, the relative humidity in the shop has been the highest it'll be for the year over the past few months, which means these pieces are probably as wide as they're gonna be. So if anything, they'll shrink down a little bit 
you know, come February or March uh, in the heating season and make up for this slight gap that I'm putting in these pieces. Okay, I've glued up the, uh, uh, you know, the drawer pocket part of this. And uh, so now I'm going to prep the surface to glue this down to the top. And then after that, I'll do the same thing with the upper top. Now, it's important to glue this down so it is nice and square so that a drawer will fit in it properly. So I've made up a blank here that uh, is just slightly less width than the back of this piece. When I put this in place, it'll mean that the front of this pocket will be just slightly narrower than the back which is how I want it for fitting a drawer. You always want a drawer to fit really nice and snug as you're first putting it into its pocket, but then gradually loosen up a little bit towards the back. And that way it slides better. And uh, w you know, when you pull it out, if you get out uh, to a certain point, it, it tries to give you a little resistance so it doesn't come sliding right out. So I'm going to just fit this piece in here. And also, I squared up this piece so it will fit. It'll force this pocket to remain nice and square. Um, and so what I need to do then is just simply pick up my ruler, simply center this on the back here. It's a, it's a little over a half inch undersized on each side. So center that up. And do the same thing for the back dimension. And once I got that where I want it, I'll just go ahead and trace its position with a pencil. And then that'll tell me where to not put any shellac finish, because I'm going to go ahead and finish this top before I glue it up. Now my strategy for attaching the top to the uh, legs and aprons here is to glue the top along the surface, the top surface of the aprons. And, and that strategy is possible because I designed the table where long grain would be against long grain. Over here you can see I've already glued up one of the tables um, and the long grain of the frame is against the long grain of the apron, so it works just fine. So I've taken a piece of uh, particle board, and this will be my bench jig for planing down these edges so that I'm nice and flush all the way around. The legs aren't protruding up above the apron and that way I get a good solid glue joint. And this particle board is exactly the width of these legs, so this piece doesn't go anywhere. So I just take a little block plane with a 25 degree um, bevel on the, on the iron and just start trimming these up. Now here you can see I've taken a small strip of veneer like this and glued onto each side and the bottom. And that'll be runner for the drawer. So the drawer doesn't actually scrape on the, on the frame itself. It'll be raised up by the thickness of that veneer and protect that surface. And this is how I glue that strip. I put down a call and then a big strong back piece and a couple of clamps and that glues it down tightly. Well now I'm making the drawers. I went ahead and cut the blanks. I've got the back pieces, I've got the side pieces, and the front pieces, which are extra thick because they're going to be cut out in the shape of the curve. I also went ahead and glued a piece of veneer on the top of this front piece so that it would just look prettier. And uh, so now I'm doing the dovetails. Uh, I went ahead and laid out the pins. I know it's hard to see, but I used a uh, marking gauge, marking knife, 
a one to six uh, bevel square and a saddle square. Just to mark these out, I marked where the waist pieces are. This is going to be the back, so it's the pins. And uh, so I'm just cutting the pins first. I don't always do that, but this time I am. And uh, so I've got a nice fine tooth uh, Japanese pull saw here that I'm using to actually uh, try to split the line uh, that I marked. And uh, once these are all cleaned up, I'll use these to transfer to the sides where the tails will be, will be cut. Now whereas the uh, back and sides had through dovetails, the uh, front has half blind dovetails so that on this you can't cut all the way through the wood. You've got to cut at an angle and try to split your line. So get started there. And you just cut up to those lines and then later on you have to chop out the waist with a chisel. Okay, so I'm using the band saw instead of the hand saw. Saves my wrist a little bit. And you see I'm getting almost up to the score line. And then I'll just clean up with a chisel. And I, of course I get all that waste out so it's a whole lot easier cleaning up the, uh, you know, the end of the, of, of the, where the pin fits there. So that, that saves me a lot of time. But you can do that with tails. You can't really do that too easily with pins. Well, I made band sawn veneer from a little bit of crotch in the tree, and uh, I have two pieces, so this, these pieces are going to match. And I went ahead and glued it up in the uh, glued that up in the uh, vacuum bag, and uh, sanded this down to P400. And now the moment of truth. I want to see if this figure pops out when we put a little shellac on it. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. That uh, that really worked out nicely. So we'll have a kind of a book matched pair of tables with the drawer fronts having this flame in it from the uh, from the crotch of the tree, and that's that's how it will sit. Now, next step. This is a really bulky piece because it's full thickness. Now I have to band saw some waste out of here so I have a curved front. So that'll be the next step. be the drawer bottoms.